Welcome to everyone. I'm Liz Jennings. Uh, this is session 3B, New Career Force Resources for Adult Learners, Job Seekers, and Employers. I'm Employer Engagement Specialist with Career Force, State of Minnesota's Career Resources. Um, some of the things that I do in my role is um, share the exciting news about Career Force to participants like yourself. Um, I assist all of the, our staff who are employer navigators in each one of the lo locations. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, coming up this hour. I'm a resource in uh, provide assistance to businesses who are recruiting, and I host a number of industry related webinars. Joining me today is my colleague Art Larson. Thanks, Liz. Art, um, go ahead. Yes, my name is Art. <laughs> my name is Art Larson. I am the job service program coordinator for the state of Minnesota within the Career Force system. Um, what I do for the state is a lot of the virtual programming. Uh, the workshops for job seekers. Um, I also help train staff on the various programs um, and help to uh, create connections. And ABE is one of those connections we constantly work on strengthening. And that's why I'm very happy to be here today. I'll turn it back over to Liz. You know, we realize that a number of you already partner with Career Force staff on a regular basis. So really some of our goals today are to deepen our shared understanding um, of what we're gonna learn about what you do and how we can make that stronger. And then uh, share with you some of the, the career force resources that have been de developed just even in the past couple of months that you can take back to your offices. Um, we're also gonna give you a glimpse into some of the occupation forecasting that our labor market department has been doing and um, have a, a few discussions on how we can strengthen the partnerships with Career Force. So just talking just a little bit about um, kind of that partnership as it exists uh, within WIOA. WIOA, the Workforce Investment, uh, excuse me, Workforce Innovation and Opportunities Act, uh, for those of us who have been around long enough to remember the Worst Workforce Investment Act or WIA, uh, from 1998. Um, it, it creates a system in which there are three tiers or three titles. Uh, Adult Basic Education is a Title II program and Wagner-Pizer Act uh, Employment Services, which, are, which Liz and I work under, are Title III. So we have a partnership built right into our funding and uh, it's something that um, I'd like to get into the chat. If you could let me know um, if your location, your ABE location, is it located within a career force uh, building? Uh, I know it's not very common, but I know there are a few out there. So if your agency is located within a career force, please put it into the chat. Um, while we're waiting, uh, I was stunned at how few were. And I know there are a couple throughout the state. Uh, I know there are a couple that are looking at that possibility, and uh, we'll be talking about the benefits of that as we go along, but I'll turn it back over to Liz. Um, in doing our homework for today's session, Art and I talked with um, many of the career force job service managers across the state. You know, we asked them to ask them to tell us about their ABE partnership in their location. So every time you see this quote box, this is an actual response that I got, or we got from one of our job service managers. Um, so for instance, this one here said, ABE staff pick up the phone to call us when needed. The working relationship is that good. We have excellent coordination and communication with ABE staff. We regularly coordinate well beyond the scope of just adult education. And so that kind of feedback was great for us to hear. Um, to be clear, you know, I, I always like to start off, you know, any presentation that I do just with a, a definition of career force. Um, and 
you know, on our website, we say that Career Force is a network of private, public, and nonprofit partners throughout the Minnesota um, committed to helping both the job seekers, the individuals start or advance or change their career. And at a 50 50 relationship, we serve employers, we help them attract, develop, and retain talent. So that's. Um, uh, a little bit too about how art and my uh, jobs within roles within career force kind of balance that out. I primarily help the employers and he works a lot with all of the, the job seekers. Um, you know, but all of us together are striving to help Minnesota thrive economically. So, you know, this is our shared mission. So um, over, you know, across the whole state, there are at least 50 career force locations. Some are state run, some are county run, some are nonprofit run. So for instance, I'm a state employee. There are um, county run offices like Dakota County or Washington County. Um, others are run by the Rural Minnesota Concentrated Employment Program, Rural Minnesota SEP, or NEMOJET, Northeast Minnesota Office of Jobs and Training. So all of us together um, work collectively under the Career Force brand. Art, do you wanna add anything to that? The mute is in a different location than I'm used to. Sorry about that. Um, so I pasted into the chat box the Career Force locator. Uh, one thing to keep in mind um, when you, if you're ever talking to job seekers and trying to give them resources, um, some people have it firmly in their head that they are tied to a specific Career Force location. So I live in Twig, Minnesota, which is in between the Range and Duluth. So if I were to do a search for the nearest Career Force locations to me, I may find Hibbing, Virginia, Grand Rapids, Cloquet, Duluth. Um, all of them can provide services. So uh, people aren't tied to just one location. However, we do recommend that you develop a local um, relationship, even in this virtual world we're living in right now, because uh, the closer the Career Force location is to you, the more local information about employers and funding opportunities and educational opportunities they would have. Um, but that locator is a really nice thing to send to people if they're unsure of where they can connect with some staff. And, they can, and if you see on the screen here, you can see there's contact information uh, if they were to click learn more for any of these locations. Liz? Uh, oh. Go ahead. Oh, you're muted again. Trying to be quick on the mute. Um, so this is just who we're serving. And this has changed pretty dramatically in the last year, as I'm sure your programs have also. Um, we, we track these uh, interactions we have as closely as possible. We had to very quickly transfer what we did on site to virtual and um, very proud of, of, of how quickly we were able to do that. However, it did create a um, technology gap between um, who we served and it really, um, widen some of the gaps for underserved populations because of that access to technology. Uh, we've tried uh, some things as creative as drive-through job fairs. We've done uh, technology distributions through PCs for people. Um, but you can see on some of the, the um, demographics here that we still need to do a better job. Uh, it's something that we hope to um, transition out of as people get vaccinated and we, we start reopening. Um, however, it has really pointed out to us that um, technology is a real barrier to accessing some of these services, even when we are open. All right. So uh, the Career Force virtual and interactive site for job seekers, I'm going to post that. I'll get that in the chat here in just a moment. This was a new website that we created. Um, early on in the pandemic to give people some immediate resources. Uh, what we did is we started off with some job clubs uh, that we hosted statewide. Uh, we found out very quickly that instead of having 
uh, 40 or 50 different local workshops, we could do this more effectively by sending out um, a what we call a gov to live mass email to anyone who would subscribe to career force um, information. And then we would present a, a WebEx or a Teams or a Zoom event. Um, and that got off the ground pretty quickly. And to this point, uh, up to this point right now, we've served about 20,000 people. Uh, they're not all unique people, uh, but there have been 20,000 participants to these online workshops, which have varied from uh, resumes to interviews to what we call the creative job search program. Uh, and then Liz did many of these um, presentations uh, inviting employers in. She did a lot of uh, employer uh, panels. She did employers of the day. And I'll let her talk a little bit more about that. The first step uh, in this process, go ahead, Liz. Sorry, well, bad transition. No, I mean, we could, yeah, we could go back and forth. Um, yeah, why don't you talk about, you know, getting involved first and- Sure, sure. There's a couple of paths to this. And um, the, the reason we have to do this, like any organization, we can't just provide services. We have to track the services that we provide. So access to workshops, to uh, counselor interactions, really start with um, someone creating a job seeker, creating an account on minnesotaworks.net. Uh, once they do that, they can register for any of the online workshops we have, or eventually the in-person workshops. Um, it takes about five minutes to create a, uh, an account. But as you can see, and this is fairly recent, this also gives people access to over 88,000 jobs. Right now we have the largest differential between employers who are looking and job seekers who are applying. Um, currently on our site, I think it's right around 14,000 resumes for 88,000 positions. Uh, when I first started with the state, that was completely reversed. There were 90,000 resumes for 14,000 jobs. Um, it's changed, it's ebbed and flowed, but this is the starkest differential I have seen in, in the time I've worked with the state. You can also log into CareerForce MN. Dot com. That's the other website that's specific to career force. Uh, what this gives people access to is uh, they can track their career trajectory on here. They can save assessments. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of information and resources that are available on career force MN without an account. But creating an account allows you to save some of that information as you um, go through uh, the process and the assessments and the career trajectories or career paths within the site. All right. So Career Force from Anywhere is our virtual location. So this was created um, after about a month and a half of doing the virtual services. What we found was, and I, I worked out of the Duluth location at the time, um, we didn't have a mechanism for tracking statewide offerings. Everything was so local that uh, everything had been run through the Duluth Career Force location. And I believe um, in the month of March last year or April, there were 3,000 people that were tracked through the Duluth location, which probably will be the record that will stand forever. Um, very quickly, we realized we, we had to adapt. So we created this Career Force from Anywhere location, and it's just a clearinghouse for people to one-stop shop. You go to this particular location, and it'll show you all of the different um, workshops that are available. And again, we didn't want to uh, repeat the same offerings all over the place. There was some of that. Some people had some unique offerings like LinkedIn classes or whatever, but it was much more, um, it worked a lot better to have uh, a larger group because then there was networking going on and then there was a lot of exchange of information. And so we had in the early days up to 400 people attend webinars. Uh, right now we average about a hundred people per workshop. Um, some of the workshop topics that we offer, uh, like I said, is interviewing skills. That's held every other week. Uh, we also do the resume class, which is held every other week. We have the New Leaf online, which is specific to justice-involved individuals. That happens next Wednesday. Um, we do some um, orientations for minnesotaworks.net. Um, and we also do uh, some very specific pieces of what are, we call our creative job search. Creative job search used to be a seven hour class in which people would come in um, for the full day. We take a lunch break and, and it, they'd be there all day with us. And at the end of the day, they'd get a, 
uh, a really nice manual that would cover everything we had talked about. We found out that people do not want to be online for uh, seven hours at a time. So we broke that into our segments and we hold those every Tuesday on a variety of topics. And it's a six week series. Uh, the last one is a very popular one, which is job search over 50 or facing employment at 50. Um, other than that, there are some um, local events that uh, some of the local career force locations have developed over the course of the last year. And we're starting to learn how to do this a little bit better. This was a new process for not only us, but for the people we serve. Um, one of the, the ways I kind of enticed people to take that step and join an online class is that you're not only getting the information that is being distributed in the class, you're learning how to communicate online. You're learning how to do a Zoom, a WebEx, um, a Teams meeting, because these are the skills used in interviewing nowadays. And I think no matter what happens with the pandemic, we will have seen a shift in kind of how work is done. Working from home is now more of an option than it ever has been. And we've kind of let, you know, we can't, we let the cat out of the bag or we've opened that box and uh, I don't think we can close it. Um, at least not to the levels at which it was, because many people have said, we've proven we can work from home. Um, companies have realized there are some savings, there's some benefits to that. And so it, interacting with these online workshops has really helped. Another quote from some of our uh, managers who collaborate with um, all of you. ABE rents space from us. So now they offer their classes within our location virtually right now. It's an awesome partnership. We have found it extremely beneficial to have them co-located. And we really appreciate ABE and their work on career pathways and contextualized curricula. So the big question is, what are those career pathways that we should be um, helping people go, you know, go in that direction? What is going on right now with the labor market? And where are the forecast going to for the next 10 years. Um, as you can imagine, the labor market department with Indeed has been just as uh, uh, busy as all of the rest of us have been. Um, Dave Simf is one of the researchers within Indeed Downtown St. Paul, and he put together this um, article that uh, hit the the website, um, I think last November or so, but it's the job outlet outlook um, through 2028. What he was finding is that due to, you know, the rising baby boomers, climbing senior citizen population who would have uh, increasing healthcare demands, and because our, our, our economy, you know, everything about our, our world is going more and more digital, there's kind of a twofold growth um, of jobs. So we're going to see a growth of the service industry, the personal care industry, the healthcare support, educational, or I'm sorry, healthcare pract practitioners, community and social service. So all of those that are really people related, but then also the jobs that are in the technical, the computer and the mathematical positions, they are also expected to grow at twice the rate. Um, so keep that in mind when we're looking at this then. This chart here, um, and this is also within the body of that, that article by Dave. Um, notice the job occupation areas with the highest growth rate of around eight to 9%. We've got the professional and related positions. We've got the service occupation. So that service is both that you know, like fast food, you could say the restaurants, the hospitality industry, as well as the personal care industry, PCAs. And then we have the construction and extraction. Um, you know, Art and I talked about this, you know, as we were prepping, you know, it, it really has implications for the directions. I mean, and it really, in some ways speaks to the importance of helping our job seekers and helping our students get the most amount of education as they possibly can. Um, be, because really, you know, the, 
these three growth areas are going to be at the opposite ends of the um, educational attending, uh, attainment and the earnings range. Art, did you want to add any more thoughts about this? You know, because we, we did talk about this for a bit. You know, I just really, I think it helps to, um, to help direct people in, into the right careers. You know, one of the things we are, we are looking at as a, as a kind of movement from deed is the Good Jobs Now uh, campaign, which is just got rolled out, I believe today. Uh, and we're going to be talking about this data-driven um, information that we're going to be giving to job seekers. And in the past, we have worked with um, labor market information that was very much in the know. You know, you had to be able to um, crunch the data, and it was not something that job seekers generally interacted with. What we've tried to do in CareerForce is take some of that data and put it in a uh, format in which is easily accessible, easily understandable, and linkable to jobs and opportunities within your area. So if you haven't done it in the past, check out the online tools on CareerForce, and a lot of this information just creates itself very organically through a few clicks, um, and it can lead um, within a couple of minutes to some opportunities and some direction to job seekers that maybe they didn't have in their job search. Right, yeah. Um, looked in another way, you know, we see the statisticians, the personal care aids really has the largest growth, um, occupational therapy assistance, actuaries, et cetera. So um, one of the tools then that we've done and we've put together our labor market, I'm, I'm getting credit for what they do, um, is this jobs in demand list. And um, it's updated every single month. There is a downloadable file to a, to a PDF. Um, and so you can see what, who's hiring, you know, who's um, looking for uh, job seekers right now. What are some of the expected wage um, wages for that? What are some of the duties? And so for immediately for what people are looking for, the jobs in demand is a great list. Um, I also put in the chat the URL for the new Good Jobs Now. And it, like Art said, it just hit this morning and I only learned about it yesterday. So that's why we didn't get it included in our um, our slides, but it's really worth all of you going to CareerForce MN and then the, the banner across the top will link you directly to um, the data site. And it has a, a, you know, a clickable, searchable um, list of all of the jobs um, that are in high demand, the expected wages, the numbers of people who are employed in those fields right now. So it's a really good career and job oriented tool for all of your clients. So, well, let's, let's hear from you, you know, or if you wanna add anything to that. Yeah, so what we'd like to, to know is, um, we can take our, anything that we learned today, we can take back to our people. Um, I, I would just mention to all the managers in, in the state of Minnesota that I'd be at this ABE conference. And, you know, we're, we're selfishly hoping to get some information from you. Um, and this would be really a good idea to start creating some conversations on how we can strengthen partnerships. Um, you know, maybe some of the things that you would like to see, um, I'll give you an example. I work very closely with ABE in Duluth, uh, actually subcontracted with them for a while. And we were able to do some very creative things through the North Star Digital Literacy Initiative that we'll, we'll mention briefly in a little bit. Um, but is there something that we could be doing better to get referrals to you or to process referrals you, we, you get from us, uh, we get from you, I guess, the two way, the street there. Um, We'd, we'd really like to get some feedback to bring back to our people so that we can learn from this, this interchange also. So Sue writes CNA. Some of her students are preparing for that. Uh, Heather mm -hmm. says students in her class are working towards a GED adult diploma and they need jobs now that don't require a GED, yeah. The good news is I talk to employers, at least in the production fields, 
that that are you know okay with um, not having a GED. Granted, you know they they are entry level, um, but I've been working with um, people in the like the building products industry. Uh, people like companies like Schweder's companies in the North Metro who are building trusses and other construction materials and then um, going into the field and they're saying, hey, they'll they'll train. Um, I had others like in the Jordan by the yard products. Another thing I'd like to add to that is when you register for a MinnesotaWorks.net account, you can do a search for jobs that don't require a GED or high school diploma. Um, and they're regionalized. So you can say, I'm, I'm willing to work within 10 miles from this zip code, uh, if it's a bus line situation, or even in some cases, you can search for remote jobs that way. But it's a very customizable job search. And one of those fields that people don't play around with enough is the education field. Um, on the employer side of it, and Liz is going to be talking about that in a little bit, um, they can tell people what education is required very specifically. And some employers are looking to tap, um, you know, very wide variety of, of job applicants. So we've seen, I think, at least I have seen, um, more willingness to forego some of the um, educational requirements, which in the past seemed kind of silly. You know, why, we, we often ask as a career force system and partners, when we talk to employers, why do you need a bachelor's degree for this? Why do you need an associate's degree for this? What, what's the purpose of that? And it was just a, a, some, a check mark. You know, it was just a, that's because of how we've always done it. So we're trying to educate people that there is a huge untapped labor pool of people who have a lot of, you know, life experience or have a lot of um, energy to put into a career that just don't happen to have that GED or high school diploma. Yeah. Um, Laura says she teaches uh, building maintenance and they earn an OSHA 10 card. That's great. And Teresa said that's good to hear. Um, I've seen too many jobs seem to require a high school credential when it sure seems that they wouldn't be needed. Yeah, most of the time from the construction industry that, you know, the people that I've been working with this winter, they say basic math skills, you know, being able to use a mm -hmm. um, measuring tape, uh, you know, that type of math skills, and then they train. Um, and the good news is everyone who has been, all the recruiters who have been on the Explore Career Series this winter um, are willing to train. I mean, the employers now are just assuming that they will be doing the training. And so that's a good shift from um, years ago when, you know, you had to have three years experience before you could get into anything. So good. You know, I, I threw this in here. I just wanted to um, have you all aware too that if as you have students, um, adult students who might be thinking about moving somewhere else um, or they wanna find out a little bit more about the county that they live in right now, um, the deed labor market d department has county profiles for every single Minnesota county where they have you know, like commuting rates or cost of living data, um, population or education. I oftentimes um, give these to recruiters who are new to Minnesota for them to learn about their region, but they are um, able to be used too by job seekers or by people who are um, thinking about moving to another, another area. Here's, here's a wish. When we were talking to our, our managers, they said they wish um, for a better understanding of the services and programs that are available at CareerForce to our mutual customer. I think that meant that they, you know, they just want a, a deeper mutual understanding. It would be helpful moving forward to send out ongoing correspondence of our CareerForce services and programs to keep our name front and center. Sounds like they really want to be able to help, and they want um, they want to make sure that you remember that they're that they're there. And um, keep thinking of all your wishes too. And at the end, we're gonna get them from you. 
So I did want to point out, you know, we, we said at the beginning that we serve job seekers and employers at a 50-50 level. And I've talked to a number of you on this call before and, and others in the ABE system to know that you get employers reaching out to you saying, hey, we'd like to hire. You know, their employers want, they want connections. So um, I thought I would just go through a few of these resources just so you're aware what's on CareerForce if you haven't already. Um, and so when you go to careerforcemn.com, across the top, you know, we always have the banners that, that slide through every five seconds or whatever, and that's where you'll find the Good Jobs Now new initiative. But there also is a banner for employers. Employers are wondering, how do we get started? And so there's a banner for virtual and interactive services for employers. That's oftentimes the first place to direct them to. Some of the other resources that we have more deeply embedded in CareerForce, but, but they are under employers, more resources, um, are a diversity, equity, and inclusion guide for employers and um, a guide written by our workforce strategy consultant team called Addressing Hidden Bi Bias in the Workplace. Um, enough of the recruiters that I'm talking to tell me that diversity is the hottest topic in the recruiting field and in HR. They know that this is critical and they know, the, uh, at least I can say maybe the, the white recruiters know that they need to learn. They're, they're looking for resources. So um, our workforce strategy consultant team has put these two guides together for them. Another one of the resources too in, in that whole diversity realm is working with um, people who have disabilities. And we know disabilities can be hidden and apparent. Um, our vocational rehabilitation uh, services team has done a great job in partnering and working with career forces. I know they work with you too on all of the different resources. Art, I'm wondering if you can uh, take over for just for a minute. Sure, um, give, give Liz a chance to, to get something to drink here. Uh, so uh, in my career, I, I've worked uh, very closely with um, VRS in providing um, as a vendor. Um, I used to work for Avivo, if you're familiar with Avivo. Um, and some of our career force locations uh, sit as standalones for VRS. VRS actually shows up separately in some of those contact cards when you go to the location finder. Um, it's, it's, there's an amazing wealth of knowledge, state services for the blind, uh, the deaf and hard of hearing, and, and voc rehab as a whole. Uh, it has been a tremendous resource for us within our location, but they're also a great resource for partners to reach out to with those questions and to make connections, especially for students uh, who have a plan, uh, who have a high school plan, and they're working towards, and I'm sure there's a lot of cross-pollination between the people you serve and uh, Voc Rehab. So please, uh, there is a, a website right on the Career Force um, homepage that would lead you to, to Voc Rehab, and they have a kind of a catch-all email that you can click on to ask questions if you, if you don't have that personal connection with a counselor set up at this point. Liz, how are you doing? I'm better. Thank you. Um, good jobs now. This is the link to the deed. Um, it had been a site on deed where uh, employers who had good jobs were posting videos. The term now has been re, uh, reformatted for this new initiative, but I believe that those videos are still up there. And that's another great way that we support Minnesota's businesses. Um, Julie asked earlier in the chat, and I told her I'd get to it, what's the employer navigator term? When CareerForce was rebranded from the workforce centers about a year and a half, two years ago, um, there was one person in every CareerForce, maybe sometimes two, two people in every single CareerForce location that was asked to be the main point of contact for businesses calling in. Um, this 
is an, in addition to all of their other duties with uh, job counseling and job service uh, initiatives. So some of the things that um, I support them with are helping them run their local area virtual career fairs or um, providing them more details about our work opportunity tax credit or H2B, um, helping them with the Minnesota Works Connections, helping them help businesses. So these are just a, a, a few of the ways that um, we've been helping all of the career force locations on a local basis reach out to employers. So if you ever have a, a business who says, you know, I really need help hiring, I don't know where to turn, send them to career force. And the other thing I wanted to point out too, you know, as Art mentioned um, a few minutes ago, we encourage all of our job seekers to post their resumes in up to five different versions of their resumes um, on CareerForce, I'm sorry, on MinnesotaWorks.net. And then we instruct the businesses to go in there and search for people they might want to consider um, hiring. And I have talked to uh, recruiters in the past six months who've done this and found people. Uh, one HR person hired um, a PCA part-time. She knew the woman already had a job. She could tell that from the resume, but she said, hey, do you want a part-time job? And, and the woman did. And so she now works a couple of evenings a week with their um, PCA facility. So we really do encourage you to get the word out to the job, your job seekers, your adult clients. Um, so that they can be searchable. And lastly, too, we have more and more resources uh, for employers if they want specialized assistance, whether it's our veterans team or vocational rehabilitation or the workforce strategy consultants, or unfortunately, if they're laying off our rapid response team, we've got the meet your regional team that is sorted both by category and by region. So this is kind of a snapshot of the central Minnesota area. Uh, and I just took a couple screenshots and kind of collaged them, but um, highlights of the central Minnesota area and how many business establishments were in it, et cetera. And then the team members who can uh, drill into any of those resources for people. Um, and then lastly, Another uh, area for your job seekers, if again, that labor market data, I guess we, you know, as I'm talking about this, we really have the labor market data coming from like five different points going at you. Um, but you can go to careerforcemn.com, scroll down to the middle and there's this green bar across the middle. It says explore careers. So your adult students can type in something that they're looking for and then get uh, more of that industry data, what to expect, whether it has a bright outlook or, um, or whether it's gonna be more of a challenge, um, some of the associations and some of the local area data for that. All right. Um, so as we had tr transitioned to some of the virtual services, we quickly um, realized that we should be recording some of this. Uh, Liz has recorded, I believe, every one of her sessions, and I think I think I've recorded every one of mine. Um, we have a huge um, playlist on YouTube right now. I'm going to put into the chat just um, kind of a repository for some of the things we have done. Um, we've done things very creatively all the way from you know, Microsoft Word 1 through 3, Excel 1 through 3. Um, ideally, we'd like people to participate live. Um, because then they can interact and they can ask questions. But having this online uh, resource has really taken some of the scare factor off so people can interact with these, uh, these YouTube videos. And it was very strange. I was looking at one of the videos I had posted and someone had made copies, uh, excuse me, posts or comments. And I saw three, two, three. And I thought, well, I couldn't understand what they were talking about. 
what they were doing is as I was asking questions during the workshop, they were responding on the YouTube video, um, which threw me and it was kind of kind of cool. Um, we have found that when you go virtual, you kind of lose your location. Um, the state of Michigan uses some of these videos as um, the uh, required content for job seekers. They, have, they say, you know, watch these three videos from Minnesota to complete your job search plan. We've had people from Georgia call to do a resume review because they watch one of the resume uh, workshops on YouTube. So anyways, if you're trying to get people to get an exposure to what they could kind of expect, um, send them this link. It's a little overwhelming because there's a lot there, um, but it allows people to very, very um, comfortably have exposure to what they could expect if they register for a live workshop. Liz, there's anything you want to add for the videos that you contributed? No, I just think that the, um, the virtual career fairs in the Explore Career videos are great for company research. research. And so to the person who said that, you know, their adult students need a job now, um, they can they can go to those those videos and then look for the companies and then, you know, kind of listen. They're usually 10 minute conversations. Um, and I I put the company names in in the comments area so you can kind of get a sense of who's there. I think I've got to update the past two weeks, but I'll get to that pretty soon. Um, you know, OK, social media is our world, but I still uh, recommend that you follow Career Force MN either on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Our communications department does a fantastic job and they even schedule new posts over the weekend so that you're always in the know about what's going on. Sorry, my mute disappeared on me. Uh, so these are just some of the comments we got from um, job service managers in, in a poll we put out. And this is just our wishes. You know, We wish that if you had a customer who needed assistance with a resume, you know, that's certainly something if you are comfortable doing, that's, that, that's your world. Um, we, we can do that for them also. If you have a customer who is ready to do job search or it's part of their, um, I think in, in some, some cases we've had it part of the graduation processes, you know, take a walk over to the Career Force location. We're, we're very lucky in Duluth, we're two blocks away. Um, but the more exposure people can get, the more likely they are to use services when they need them. Um, when you have a resume or a, a job application due at the end of the day, um, you're not going to know who to go to. If you have that in the back of your mind about there are resources available locally, there's people who help people find jobs for a living. That's all they do. I work for the job service. It's in the title, the job service. Uh, you don't have to pay for anything that we do. So we certainly want people to take advantage of that. Career Force should refer customers to them if they are lacking computer skills. Uh, so um, that's something that has been a partnership in the past where we have found that, you know, there's certain things we do well and there's certain things that ABE does extremely well. And when we find a customer who needs some help, it would be very, very helpful for us to have a schedule. Uh, and I know many locations do this very well. But if you haven't connected and let your uh, local Career Force staff know what is going on and and you know, drop off some marketing flyers. Um, it's more for like um, counselors and um, career lab staff to have a familiarity with what's available more than us passing flyers out or posting them or anything like that. Um, there's two, and, and just as an example, in the Duluth location, there are two um, career lab staff that work with people with, with technological barriers on a daily basis when we're open to the public. And the more referrals that they can make or the more resources they have, uh, the better. Um, Career Force should rely on them for TABE testing for program enrollments that need it. And I know many locations, if, even if they're not co-located, that's one of the services they provide as a partner. They go in um, two days a week, two days a month, and they do the TABE testing. And then ABE uses Northstar Digital Literacy. DEED uses a variety of free tools such as GCF Learn Free. Uh, it would be nice to see if we could be on the same page. Um, we use both. 
North South Digital Literacy is something that uh, I know ABE has license for. I know many career force locations have license for, but just here's a case study. Someone comes in and wants to see where their computer skills are at. Uh, in some locations, we could proctor an assessment on North Star. And it, if you're familiar with that product, what it will do at the end is it'll say you passed or you didn't pass. If you didn't pass, it'll give you some ideas of where you could use help, where, where you could use some training. Uh, there's some things that are done right within that site, but ABE, many ABE locations are very familiar with that product. And that would be a great referral to say, hey, there's a, a place right down the street or you know, another end of town that could help you with this um, this barrier you're currently having and could expose you to a whole bunch of new job opportunities if you had those skills. So that's just one example of kind of how we could partner to uh, benefit job seekers and uh, students. Another thing, and we're gonna go to the next slide. Um, ABE is already on CareerForce. Uh, we have a page dedicated um, to, to what the services that you would offer. Um, some of you may be very familiar with this. If you haven't looked at it, take a look. Make sure that what we're putting out there is what you what represents what you can provide. Um, this is on the CareerForce MN page itself. So it is a statewide uh, page. There are opportunities for some local variations uh, of what is, is put on local pages. So certainly reach out to your, your um, local job service managers or partner managers and you know, give them some feedback. Um, how can we better market your services through our web presence? That would be, that would be something that, that would be great to, to start a conversation on. Having said that, I haven't looked at ABE's pages uh, and seen what, what is the, there as far as referrals to CareerForce, that might be there also. Um, the ABE list is something you can search for, just like the location list uh, for finding a CareerForce location, you can search for an ABE list. And from the the uh, slide that Liz has up here appears as there's 249 entries, uh, sortables by zip code. And you, what you can do is say something like, you know, show me within the closest 10 miles. Um, and then people can get that information. Um, just one of the, the many options that partners have, and in this case, ABE specifically, to having a presence within uh, CareerForce. So specifically here, uh, Menominee, uh, ABE, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, is one of the location and it will tell what days they are open. Um, again, that's really important information to what, for us to know if it's there incorrectly. So please take, um, one of the takeaways you can take from this today is, you know, look up your location on CareerForce, make sure that the content areas are correct. Make sure that the contact, in, the contact uh, information is correct. Um, things change, people retire, people uh, move on and unless we get that information, we can't correct it on our website. I did talk uh, previously a little bit about North Star Digital Literacy. In the chat box, could you please help me out? Um, I did have this conversation locally, but I would like to kind of find a, an idea statewide. Um, do any of your locations that you work at, do you use North Star Digital Literacy as part of the programs you offer? or resources that you offer to students. I'll take a quick look. Oh, got a yes, uh, an emphatic yes from Chelsea, thank you. Uh, yes, we use North Star all the time, yes, yes, yes. There was a North Star digital literacy um, initiative through unemployment that I actually was uh, piloted. I was one of the pilot sites and we work very closely with ABE. In fact, I drove down with the local ABE director to the Twin Cities to work with the North Star Digital Literacy folks when they were rolling this out. Um, so I you know, have some really historical investment in this process. I think it's a great resource. Um, there's other resources out there, but I really like the ability to say, if you wanna to prove to an employer that you have something, you could pay for it, certainly. You could go through a lot of, you could go through testing, you could get a degree. Um, I'm not saying this is as good as a certificate or degree, but this is something that most people could access for free that at least gives a baseline for employers or themselves to kind of know where they're at. Um, so I appreciate we're seeing a lot there. Yes, and all career force centers have free access. They do. Um, what I am finding is we're not all accessing, and especially now that we've been closed, there hasn't been that opportunity. Um, 
do ABE's license, do you know uh, how long that is that just until June or is that for the rest of the year or is that, you know, uh, on a different contract? Does anyone know? Julie, you probably would. I'm not sure. What's the question, Art? Is it like this ABE? So, yeah. So do you know what ABE is licensed? There's a, is there a long standing or long term license or is it in line with the, you know, the timing of, of the Career Force Center licenses? No, it, ABE has, um, they can purchase it directly. Oftentimes we will do a statewide purchase as well and support it. So it's ongoing. Yeah. Okay. And that has gone back and forth in some of the projects we've done. I've worked through ABE's license um, in various ways through, through North Star Digital Literacy. Um, if you haven't looked at the site, I'll tell you what, there's a really easy way for you to kind of understand what it's all about. Take one of the assessments yourself. Don't worry, they're not, you're not gonna, you know, no one's gonna out you and say, oh, you, you don't have these skills. It's, it's something that you don't have to put your name on, but it really demonstrates what a customer's experience would be in taking that assessment. Um, you don't have to take the proctored assessment. You can just take a, um, a self-assessment basically. And I think it's in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint at this point. But there are other, a wide variety of other resources on that site also. All right, we're gonna move on to another quote. Um, prior to COVID, CareerForce had a good working relationship with the ABE program. Uh, it was beneficial being located both at the community college where job seekers could walk down the hall and access computer classes and ABE services. Uh, I do wanna expand a little bit on that. This is why I always push for closer connections. Uh, it's been our experience, at least my experience, that when I refer someone to ABE, even though they're two blocks down the street, um, someone who's extremely excited about it, as soon as they go out the door, life goes on. They get a phone call, they lose interest, uh, whatever. Being co-located, uh, you really have an advantage for those people who are because you can do a direct handoff. You can walk someone over. Um, that's why it works so good within career force locations to connect with dislocated workers or rehab services because it's not asking anything of the, um, the customer. Um, we're, we're making that connection for them. Um, also, I would like to, would, I would talk about ABE programs in RESEA group meetings, along with flyers at the front desk. And this is a great, great segue into something. Um, job service, state of Minnesota job service, and RESEA sessions. If you're not familiar with these, these are the reemployment sessions in which people who are receiving unemployment would be called into a career force location. And that was really a feeder into services, meaning that people came in. And we were able to talk about ABE during these reemployment sessions and make referrals. If, um, if you're, I'm sure everyone's aware, those type of things haven't been going on over the last year. No one has been called into a reemployment session. That changed this week. This week, we started a pilot program along with unemployment to call people who are receiving unemployment and let them know about what services are out there. Job service staff will be making literally thousands of calls over the next couple of weeks. And we'll, we'll be talking about, you know, is there anything we can do to help you? And ABE is one of the services we talk about. It's a referral we can make. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, you're seeing some more referrals. Um, we just completed a training earlier this morning on how that's going to go. And staff are very excited to start making calls next week to a lot of Minnesotans that haven't necessarily known about our services or the services we could refer to. So that's, a, that's kind of a very topical uh, thing to put out there. It's just, it's just know, happening right now as we speak. And, and it is really pretty exciting all across the career force. Um, a few minutes ago, someone else posted, uh, Chelsea posted a question related to the, the collaboration here. Post-COVID, would workforce staff ever conduct a workshop inside our ABE classroom within the Department of Corrections? It's so tough that we can't refer, can't access the internet with our students, can't be virtual. Um, and then they added, well, we could refer students after release, which is a great reminder. Uh, Art, do you have any other um, thoughts about the collaboration between Department of Corrections and Career Force and ABE? You know, unfortunately, um, 
the uh, job service had a, um, there were some DOC contracts that, that were not renewed. So some of the things we used to do in going into uh, the prison system for early release or, or um, soon to be released um, classes and, and, and therefore referrals to other services are, are not something we do a whole lot of anymore. In fact, it, what we had is boiled down to is we still offer the new leave program uh, for uh, justice involved individuals. Um, but just on that, that thought, you know, one of the things we had we had looked at uh, at several locations was to collaborate with ABE and the library system. I think it was the Better Together grant. I think some ABE locations were involved in that. In fact, I'm sure they were. Uh, and we would have job service staff, we'd have ABE staff, and then we would conduct uh, workshops right within the library systems. I did that in two different libraries uh, in, in the area I'm in. And uh, we had up to 20 people in, in some of the classes. So those are the types of innovative type of collaborations I hope start back up again once people are um, more open to group meetings. Um, some of this stuff can be done virtually. Uh, it, it's, you know, that's a collaboration we haven't even thought of, I guess, is doing a virtual collaboration. I'm sure that's possible. Um, so there's a lot of things we can do. I'm hoping we can do more as we have more ability to open our programs or open our locations physically. Good. So you, as And that we really just talks about, I mean, we just basically okay. talked about this. Yeah, Go right, ahead. right. Um, yeah, so this is, this is the reason for our discussion. I do wanna make sure that all of you know that every Thursday, well, the first Thursday of every month, we have our What's New with Career Force. And I know some of you join the webinars, but it is open to all staff and partners, all workforce people across the state who collaborate in some way. So if you aren't already attending these um, and you don't get my meeting invites, they come from my calendar, or actually Career Force now, um, or you're not on the, the Gov Delivery that comes every Thursday, please. Um, be in touch with me and I'll get you on that list. But we've had you know, like Hannah Buckland, who's MDE's director of libraries, talk about library partnerships. We've had our De deputy, commissioning, deputy commissioner Hamza Warfa speak. Um, yesterday we uh, talked about the, the new uh, phone calling campaign. So every every week or every month, I keep saying it's um, a tighter initiative, you know, just to get you the information that you need to know that's up to date. Planning ahead, uh, Art mentioned the phone calls to unemployed Minnesotans, and April is going to be tech month. So um, we are planning a lot of um, activities, whether it's my Tuesday afternoon Explore Careers. Uh, each week we hear about a different aspect of the industry, a blog series. Our VRS colleagues will be having um, a, a, a webinar about assistive technology that employers can use, um, and so many more things around that. So you'll be able to go to CareerForce mn.com slash tech month and there'll be um, more information there the the link is uh, active right now so you can start going there and if you do plan any you know tech month activities let us know and we'll get it on your calendar our calendar we mentioned the um, location finder already but that's that exists. Art, do you want to say more about that? Sure. Um, one of the things that we have done and found very successful in the online workshops that we have done is at the end of every workshop, anyone who registered for that workshop receives follow-up information. So they receive the YouTube video link, they receive the, um, the slide deck along with the speaker notes, and other additional information based on the topic. So if it's a resume, it would be um, resume templates. If it's interview, it would be common questions and how to answer them. Um, but what we include in every single um, follow-up that we send is the location finder in a kind of fully realized PDF. It's got all 50 locations. 
the idea of this was, and it was very successful, is even though these workshops were statewide and someone in, let's say Winona could be giving a workshop to someone in International Falls, we always encouraged everyone who needed the service to reach out to their local career force location to develop that one-to-one -one relationship with a career force specialist. Um, this is the online version of that, and it certainly works, but we're, we're thinking of as a, a, these online as you know, having value themselves, but also as a gateway or an introduction for people who may have never experienced our resources before to start having that conversation one-on-one. -on -one. And that has developed into not just resume reviews, but having conversations about uh, barriers to employment, uh, gaps in education, and it re has related, re relayed in referrals to many different partners, including ABE. Um, I don't have statistics for all of that because all 50 locations were um, were affected by this, and it was probably uh, the biggest draw towards localized services that we had without the unemployment sessions going on. So if you haven't checked out the website, that's a, it's right on the, the homepage, Location Finder. Uh, make yourself very aware of it so you can use that as a resource to people you serve, possibly. You know, we're going to get All right. right um, just uh, I'll, I'll go ahead. Well, I was going to get into um, hearing from everyone. You know, we've got about 10 minutes left and um, we've heard all of uh, job service managers wishes and success. We've talked about this. Um, we want to hear from you now. What do you wish Career Force knew about ABE? What can mm. we take back to our colleagues? Um, and, you know, the other question is, what can we do to help deepen the partnership between all of us? So whether you type in the chat or um, if people unmute, I think that's okay. Um, we'd like to hear from you. Mm -hmm. One time I attended a, a Ramsey County Workforce uh, Development Board meeting, and I was chatting with the ABE director after that. Um, she might even be on here, I don't know. But she said, you know, we just wish we, the, the career force people knew that we were here for helping to teach English as a second language, or if you hear from employers that are looking for um on-site instruction for many of their employees we are here please refer us teresa wrote i'm not sure if they always understand that our average student is lower in english and math than they think they are often too low for most career pathways okay uh, many students didn't know how to reach out for help when no one had contact information for those working from home. Um, I, I'm not quite sure if I understand it. Uh, Heather said working with language barriers for English language learners. Uh, another one, please emphasize that a high school diploma for a starting point is unfair for every job. Yeah, yeah. You know, that and, is a message we've heard loud and clear. Um, it's not always received uh, in that way. That is something that uh, I know in, in my, my uh, locations that I've worked in, that is something we've, we've, we've made very apparent to employers. Uh, some are open to it. Um, I think we're at a unique time and place right now where they're more willing than they have been in the past to you know, change their, their processes and accommodate different levels of skills and training needs simply because uh, for no other reason that they're very desperate for employees right now. Uh, employers are reaching out to, to Liz and I, I've had employers that would be extremely happy if we did an hour and a half session and they got one potential uh, employee out of it. They would be thrilled because that was one person that they didn't have to wait for. That's one person that came to them. 
Um, so the more feedback we can give, uh, I think the better to them. And I'm, I'm glad to hear, you know, some of the things I've heard echoed from you. And that's certainly something we'll bring back to the people we work with. Right. So what's our next steps? Um, Art and I will definitely share everything that we heard with um, our colleagues. Um, if, if you aren't already attending the monthly What's New with Career Force, please you know, reach out to me mm -hmm. and or uh, put your name or your email in the chat and I'll grab the chat um, before we end this, this conversation and I'll make sure you're on that. Um, what else can we do? You know, do you need more materials? Do you need um, paper materials maybe, or a PDF of some sort that um, you can print and hand off to your students? Do you need uh, language resources? I know our communications are working on that. Thank you to Laura. I just want to mention, I don't know if we talked about this, but in the chat, um, what someone had put in the chat prior to COVID, I would take my classes for a tour and overview of training. It was a great way for my students to connect with Career Force Center and, and more likely go there on release from prison. Um, I, I, that was done in Hibbing. Is that, is that from someone in Hibbing? Um, I, I, I helped facilitate that at, at one of the locations. Um, I'm hoping it's done throughout the state uh, because it's, it's extremely important before people, um, you know, this pre-release type of, of, of resources, it benefits everyone. Um, as we open, um, I hope to have a grand rollout that we can announce to the world that we are open. Um, are any of your locations physically open at this point? Maybe they are, and I just don't know about it. Um, could you put that in the chat? Or is, is anyone physically open right now? Yes. Okay. Good. That, 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 that's good to know. Uh, some are and some are not. Um, some career force locations that are run by partner staff are open to some extent. All of the deed manage aren't right now. Um, just personal, my, my kids went to their first day of school two weeks ago. Uh, so I know things are starting to open up. Uh, once we start to open up, I'm, I'm hoping to, to reconnect with all the various partners but especially those aren't lo who aren't located within our physical locations. Um, thank you to Laura for clarification on, on what I couldn't get through my thick brain, um, but students would call the sites and no one would answer. Um, all of the sites have been closed. The career force locations have been closed for the past 12 months, unfortunately though the staff are instructed to uh, have all, always have someone um, maintaining the, the voicemail and calling back. So I apologize in advance if people haven't been calling back, you know, in a timely manner. Um, so the, hopefully the, the Career Force MN uh, is, is kept more up to date with the emails. Um, but that's something that we will bring back and just make sure that mm -hmm. all managers have a system. Thank you. Um, Deb wrote, our ABE program would welcome an interagency case management approach to working with shared customers. Our students remain frustrated with having to tell their story to every agency they act, interact with. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I've heard this from others as well. So we should go on, on, we no longer have a career force center in our community and our joint efforts are logistically more difficult for students and staff alike. Just adds a layer, another layer of complexity. Yeah. All of this, it, this is fantastic. Thank you. I'm reading this and so I'm like, oh yeah, I have to talk. Um, this is all really, really helpful. And, um, you know, perhaps we can continue this dialogue in the coming months. Um, 
you know, in a, a separate meeting, not in the open forum that's being recorded here. But Art and I will talk and we'll see what we can, you know, we can do and we'll bring it back to our directors too. Um, because we are committed, you know, to serving all job seekers and, um, you know, bringing this information to in my work with the employers, letting them know, um, you know, that they're, yeah, just working with them and, and getting jobs accessible to everyone. Um, Art, anything else you want to add? Yeah. I would just say, um, I, I believe all the uh, materials will be available to everyone. Liz, if you wouldn't mind putting the, um, uh, our contact information into the chat, mm -hmm. or at least mine, I, I won't speak for you. It's, it's, it's right here. Um, please reach out to either one of us. You know, well, we, we, um, we have meetings with uh, managers throughout the state on a weekly, if not daily basis. Um, and I, I would really like to be a pipeline for you to getting that message out there. So if there's anything that, any ideas you have, any collaborations, any holes in, in the process of effectively working together, please feel free to reach out to me um, or Liz, and we'll do the best we can to, to strengthen that relationship. And that's why we're here today. Uh, and that's why we're absolutely thrilled to be invited to speak at this conference, because uh, I think this is something that works well, but like all partnerships, there can be an improvement. Um, I think we're at a real juncture right now uh, with you know, re-looking at how we're doing everything. Uh, at least we are. Um, and I think there are some, there's a real opportunity to change things that we've done simply because that's the way we've done them before. Um, I think we, we, are, we are more open to innovation than we have at any time in my time during the state. So got to strike while the iron's hot. And thank you all for your time today. Yes, thank you, everyone. It's been a thrill to be here. And thank you to Gail and Jody, who are our co-hosts and helped us get up to speed. Gail, do you want to take it from